Last weekend I took some 5x4 portraits and I was itching to see the results and I knew I wasn't going to have time to develop them at work until Wednesday. So I set up a, a home darkroom in the garden shed and I did it in about 20 minutes and I'm going to show you how I did it. So you want to work standing up, so you want a high workbench. This is one I've jerry-rigged by putting a, a door panel on top of a sink. Here I've taped the foil all over the window. And down here I just need to throw a blanket on the bottom of the door. It was dark enough to work at night time. Now it's winter here in Melbourne. So for my water supply, I just filled a bucket in the house. Got a trusty thermometer and I filled my bucket with 22 degrees water. And during my working, it was probably going to chill down to underneath 20. So I used my formula as per 20 degrees, starting with 22 degree water, which was probably going to be 18 degrees when I was finished. There are more sophisticated ways to do this, um, and I'll, I'll make another video about them. But late at night, I just wanted to hammer out these negatives, and I knew this was going to do the job. So I've got a bucket of water. Now with, I don't have a daylight tank for 5x4 sheets, so I'm using film hangers. This is a small deep tank, I'm using this tray as a lid. I've got fixer in that. I feel you always want to work left to right, or you could do it different, but consistency is going to make it easy for you to work in the dark. So that's a small deep tank, not everybody's going to have, probably not that common. There's an even small plastic one, that one requires a 2 litre capacity to submerge your 5x4 film hangers. This bucket of fan in the laundry is just perfect for 5x4. You could just get three of these and make that your workflow. One of the things to consider when choosing containers to develop in is the volume of liquid you need. It's fine with stop bath and fixer that you can keep reusing, but if you're using a one-shot developer, you may end up using more developer than you actually want to. So if I'm set up here, I'm working from left to right, I would want my water rinse, developer, and fixer. Now, this is making do. I'm not trying to describe an ideal situation of developing. But you want your temperatures consistent. And the problem here is the steel container is going to be colder than the plastic containers. Well, here in winter, the plastic's going to insulate the warmth in the liquid and the steel is going to wick it out. Uh, this is going to cause stress to your gelatin layer and has probably compromised my negatives a little, but they're still good, very good printable negatives. So I'd use this as a water pre-soak, gain satisfaction that my anti-halation layer has been removed. Move over to the developer. If I find myself kind of feeling it out. Now this is when I pull my coat over my head and start my phone as a timer. Of course you should pick up something like that. This one needs repair. So I use my phone. Then from there you go over to the fixer. Which I'm not going to do. I'm not going to dirty my hangers. And then you can turn the lights on. I don't believe in leaving the water running full time. I believe in soaking and changing the water. Saves water and does just as good a job. Three soaks and a rinse will do it. I don't squeegee my negatives. You can get some water spots. If you don't photo flow and you don't squeegee, it's from the minerals in the water. Cleaner water will improve this. I find you can generally print right through it without even seeing it. 